Side by side nation. The long awaited Polaris General Grizz Tech Fender Flares. So, what I'm going to do here today, I'm going to do a quick uh, overview of the product as well as an installation overview. So, these things have only been out, uh, it's July 4th weekend. I don't know, it's the uh, 7th or 8th today. I don't remember the date, but they've been out for a couple weeks, I think, maybe 10 days, a week. They've only been out a little while. So, uh, ordered them up right away. Uh, what you get in the package. As usual with Grizz Tech, you get some extremely high quality hardware. That is one of the things that stands out to me more than anything with Grizz Tech is the hardware is just fantastic. It's all legit OEM quality hardware. Uh, stuff is thought out. Nice uh, capsulated nuts in the backing plates for these things. Uh, you get a nice set of instructions front and rear. And then of course the flares. So here we go with the rears. Uh, Pretty self-explanatory. You get the front flares, a set of two each, and then the mud flaps to go along with them. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to install one side myself uh, off camera just to kind of work through any little bugs or see if there's any little subtleties that come into play. Um, and then I'll do an install overview on the other side. So I don't anticipate this taking very long. Um, thinking maybe an hour hour and a half maybe doing the filming so tools you're gonna need pretty basic uh, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket I've got a 10 millimeter socket here on my my impact as well I just use power tools for things that may not need power tools but uh, you need a drill motor uh, 5 16 drill bit for drilling the holes uh, for the the bolts and the backing plates and then on the fronts I believe it's a quarter inch drill bit so we'll see how that comes into play here as we get going. But uh, the tools needed are pretty basic so far. Um, also, too, it's not noted in the instructions, but you need a T40. Um, I happen to have just a you know, set of these Pittsburghs, but I believe that there is a, a T40 in your toolkit that came with the machine. So that T40 is going to be for taking off a couple of the uh, OEM factory screws that need to come off. Okay, so passenger side is on. Really easy front was uh, simple. Looks really good. I'll, uh, now that I've done it, I'll walk you guys through kind of an overview. I'm not going to walk through every step because this uh, installation really is as simple as uh, drilling holes and uh, putting in the hardware. So there were a couple little subtleties though that that I discovered as I was uh, messing with it. So uh, we'll start with the easy one, which was uh, to me was the front. And that is a lot of has to do with because you can uh, clamp the front in place. You don't have to, I'm usually working alone out here in the garage and let me get the camera kind of half ass set up here for you guys. So the front. Couple cheap Harbor Freight clamps and the contours of these things, the way that uh, the Grizz Tech designed them are, are really nice. They did a really good job. So the best thing you can do is, is eyeball it um, because this flare doesn't fit over the existing flare, it kind of fits underneath it and you know it follows the existing body line. Uh, my suggestion is to kind of fiddle with this to the point where you're satisfied. Uh, you know, there's a radius here, there's a radius here, and I mean, to me, you've got a quarter inch of, you know, do you want a little more reveal, a little less reveal? I, to me, it just, it looks right when you get it right. So that's my, that's my advice for you. And this is part of what makes the, the front here so easy is the fact you can clamp it. Um, with the exception that I seem to have lost my other clamp. It's probably the result of having a toddler in the garage helping out so let me find my other clamp I'll cut back okay we are back I did not find my second squeeze clamp it is probably here in the garage somewhere strategically placed by the toddler of the house so so I just use a squeeze clamp and a C clamp but anyway so I'm not going to show you every single hole here, but uh, 
what they've done is they've got these holes lined up. They got these awesome backing plates. This makes this job fantastic, super easy. Um, you're gonna drill your holes with the 5 16 drill. Um, this one is ultra dull. It goes through plastic, but that's about it. And uh, my suggestion is, while even though you've got it aligned here with a couple clamps, my suggestion is to do one set at a time. That way you can make little finite adjustments as you go. Uh, my other suggestion is, even though I, I do run these down uh, just to run them in with the uh, electric impact, uh, I do not run them down all the way tight with this. I just run them down so it, you know, it clicks once and then I will go through by hand and tighten these. Uh, this is plastic, it's a very durable plastic, but uh, you don't want to go crazy with an impact wrench here. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to run uh, these two, get them snug. These two get them snug, and as I'm going uh, with the clamps, you can make any you know finite adjustments that you want to make uh, for appearance. And uh, yeah, so it's really that simple with the front. Uh, it's just, it's really couldn't get any easier. So no, I do have the wheel turned in, uh, turned all the way to the left. Uh, makes drilling a couple of these holes a little bit easier. Uh, but also when we do the mud flap, we're going to be taking out this factory Torx head down here. So anyway. All right, so we'll do this set. Um, doesn't say so in the instructions, but I remember when I did the Grizz Tech uh, bear skins on this machine. I remember, I think Randy calls it mother's love, but looking ahead to possibly having to tear a machine down at some point to do maintenance repairs, modifications, whatever we all do to these things. Um, I like putting nanny C's on stuff. It's a freaking mess. It gets all over everything, um, but just a little dab will do you. And the reason I do that is these things are, you know, they're out in a uh, area that's getting pelted with water, mud, sand, debris, and uh, I mean, it's mild steel. It will eventually corrode. It looks to be coated, like probably zinc or galvanized. But uh, to me, any seats goes a long way, and it's not for assembly. It's for disassembly later on down the road when I have to do something to this machine. So personal choice, any seat sucks because it gets all over everything, but I assure you, uh, from my experience at least, you'll love it when you have to take something apart that's exposed to the weather. So, yeah, that easy with the backing plate. You absolutely do not need this, but I like power tools, so there you go. And as I'm going here, I'm just kind of following my lineup, making sure I like the appearance of it. it looks really good. So I'm going to move on to the next set of holes here. Little anti-seize, stab will do ya. Get this plastic crap out of here, the drill. Good news is there's really good access behind here too so it's not on the front I'll say that for the front only the back is not bad but it's not as easy as this yep yeah, that easy I can't tell you how much easier quality hardware makes this it's it, it's just mind-blowing you know had they decided to save a few bucks and put some cheap hardware in here it's very doable, it probably would have worked fine, but this is, it just, it just really makes, it makes for an OEM quality product, in my opinion. Really, in a lot of cases, I think this is better than OEM quality. The, uh, you know, the, just the example, they got the nice, I don't know what you call it, they got the cone tip on the, on the bolts, it makes for starting in those backing plates super easy, it gives you a lot of flexibility. The washers on here spin. Again, I'm sure there's names for all this type of hardware, but I mean, it really just makes for a really nice installation. And then the backing plates having these captured nuts, you know, in there. You don't have to hold these from the back when you're doing these. I mean, they just start up. It's just, they, it's the little stuff like this that makes all the difference. And uh, anyway, so I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna drill. Uh, we've got, so, we've, so far we've got two backing plates in. We've got two more, one here, one here. 
and I'll probably make a couple little tweaks to the front here just to get the body line aligned right. And then the last screw in the front is a single screw or bolt, whatever you want to call these things. And then it's just a nut. Again, really easy access. Yeah, another pro tip, clean your, clean your machine before you do this. Um, but yeah, that's that easy for the front. And then I'll get these done, tightened up, and then uh, we'll do a, a quick discussion here on the mud flap. Mud flap is also very easy to install. So I will cut back here to the mud flap once these are all tight. All right. Let's see. Hopefully I'm not going to block the camera here too bad. So mud flap. The material on these, really super flexible. I love it. It's like just a thinner, a little bit thinner version of what they probably make semi-truck mud flaps out of. But this stuff is, I mean, it's bulletproof. So, but anyway, so installation on this, there's a, there's a pre-punched hole in it. You just pop the little piece of rubber out and you've got a factory Torx T40 right here. So what I'm gonna do, run that out of there. And we are gonna take one of the Grizz Tech bolts with the nice washer built into it. And that's what's gonna hold this one on. So, I mean, I like it too, and anytime you can use a factory mount location, that's nice, you know? But, I mean, I guess you could use the factory Torx head over, but it doesn't have that nice washer on it like the Grizz Tech stuff does. So, whoop, wrong way. So just snug there, whoop, too tight. So what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of align it where the, I don't know, you can see the angle, right? Kind of give it a good alignment. You don't want it like that. You don't want it like that. Just, you know, common sense here. Right there. Um, one thing I did note, all these uh, bolts that are using the backing plates are going to use the 5 16th bit. Um, all the bolts that are drilled through and... Uh, through bolt, use the quarter inch. I like it using the big, slightly bigger drill bit up here because it actually gives you just that a little bit of, just enough if you need to massage it a little bit. So anyway, what we're gonna do, I don't know, right about there. There's no hole for this one, at least that I saw, unless I missed it, but. Oops. Oh, you know what, I did miss it. There it is, there's a hole, dummy. Right here, start slow, get the hole going. Finally, a sharp drill bit. A little bit of mother's love. And one of the nuts. These nuts are good too. They got little uh, locking, locking tabs on the back here. The nut spin or the washer spins. Again, quality hardware, guys, makes a difference. Best never rest with Grizz Tech. They, they, they're not going to ship you something with garbage in there. That's been my experience at least. And I put these Grizz Techs on in another video, the, the bear skins, and it was the same experience. The hardware makes a difference. Okay, and then this is an optional step. Uh, so you can see I've got these Vendetta rock sliders on here. Some rock sliders come around on the front. Uh, if they do, just drill through them. Or, I mean, you can leave this hanging. It's not a big deal. It's just rubber rubber mud flap. Um, but the option is, basically, you're going to take, uh, he gives you some extra hardware in here. You take it. You just tag it right on up in here like this. So I, that's what I did on the other side. Uh, that's what I'm going to do here. I think it kind of gives it a nice finished look. back here very doable do it a little bit by feel but uh, very very doable and I'm gonna go through at this point all these 10 millimeter heads just gonna give these a just a snug I, I did not run them down with the impact I just uh, don't have the trigger control on that thing to not break stuff I mean I guess I do but I would just as soon run them down by hand I like getting the feel on there and uh, making sure that everything is 
where it should be. So uh, that'll wrap up this this front, and we'll move on to the back. Okay, the backs. Not hard, but this white trim piece comes off. Comes off super easy. Don't try prying it. Don't start pulling up on it. There's one T40. That's it. Take it off. Just use your impact, use your hand tools, whatever. If you don't have a T40 in your toolbox, there's one in the toolkit that comes with the machine. Uh, this isn't even a snap fit here. This literally just now pulls out. And uh, that's it. And you're putting it back on. You tuck this into the back. You see the little pocket here. And then the whole thing just sets right back in place. So anyway, on a side note, this huge cavern in here, I'm surprised nobody's done anything with this. I'm not in, uh, not smart enough to make something in here, but I can picture, a, I don't know, some sort of small air compressor. Uh, I don't know, all sorts of things in here. Maybe a, a tool kit, a roll-up tool pouch or something. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's all sorts of space in here. It's kind of funny that they wasted it all. I, I mean, I know they're going for the design of the machine, but anyway, side note. But once that's out, um, to give you guys an idea of the two holes that we're going to be working through here. So, sorry about the light in here, guys. I tried to close in the garage and see if it would help a little bit. It was getting washed out. Now it's a little dark. So, um, so here, this hole right here is one of them we're going to be working through. It's not too bad. I don't have huge arms. I don't have small arms. Um, I think some tips here, I'll give you a tip that I found. The only one here that I think is really a little difficult to get to is there's the the middle one, there's the backing plate here, and I'll give you the tip that I use to, to get it in there. And I have pretty average to average large forearms. And uh, yeah, I'll give you the tip I use to get in there. So that's one, you'll, you'll get the back, this one, this one, this one through the back hole. And then there's another hole, where is it, on camera here. You just kind of reach, sorry about that, reach your hand on up through here and you'll you'll feel it. And that'll be the hole you'll get to for right here. There's going to be two more that will go right there. That one's not bad at all. Just takes a mild amount of contortionism. You'll get in there. Don't worry about it. So a couple things that I thought of, I mean, if you've got really big arms uh, and you just, there's no chance of getting in here, you can easily cut this. Just take your you know your little body saw take your uh, take your oscillating tool with a blade on it and uh, you know you can cut in there no problem and it's a non-appearance area so I mean you can do it cleanly and I don't think it's gonna have any sort of ill effect on anything um, second option if you got a helper you know kid wife somebody with small arms uh, just reach up in there and have them hold them for you uh, it's not a big deal it's just literally just holding them but Personally, when I'm starting a bolt or a nut or a screw, I like to feel what I'm threading it into. It's just, you know, kind of a two-handed thing for me. But um, anyway, so through the magic of camera, I, uh, I pre-drilled the, the, these two holes right here. I took this apart and pre-drilled it. The reason being, there is no way to clamp this. So to me, this was the, <laughs> the most frustrating part. I wanted to hold this, and the whole thing is kind of on an angle. And, you know, plastic against plastic is a little bit slippery. So... What I actually did is I took this apart, closed the bed, um, held it up here, and with the bed closed, actually I'll just go ahead and close it because I'm done for now. Held it up here, got the, you know, got the reveals right. Um, one note too in the instructions, and it makes sense once you get them on, but um, you don't want this spot underlapping or overlapping here so that basically is once all this is aligned that is going to be just ever so slightly touching touching the front there so there you go right there. so you get it set up I found it to be easier with the bed closed I held it up here got up under there with my drill it took a few shots it's not hard um, it does help to have a smaller drill that's not so heavy and cumbersome but I got it kind of pinned up there real good Drill those two holes, and what we're going to do, start it on in there, a little uh, handy seize, again that's optional, not required, and I got my hand down in there, 
this is a very doable job by yourself. But if you got help, it wouldn't hurt. Just uh, have you know at least start a couple of these these bolts and stuff. But most of the time I'm out out here in the garage by myself, and that's that's fine. But there is a couple a couple of spots here where uh, extra hand would help. So anyway. So now once you got these two started, it starts to get real easy. God damn. Oop. Nope. Just put them off. I want it just enough to hold it up there. I like them. I like it loose. I wanna Yeah, I wanna get this thing set up in a line where I want it. So but you know with the little exercise holes, I mean there's all sorts of play in here. And again, this is where this is where I highly, highly suggest you go through and you do one backing plate at a time. So you do two holes, start the backing plate. Do two holes, start the backing plate. Don't try to get ahead of yourself and do them all at one time. I think what will happen is, you know, what is a minuscule amount of difference back here is going to end up misaligning you up here in some way, shape, or form. So that's just my, my thought on it is to... Uh, Get the holes started and drilled. I am going to run these down just a little bit more, just ever so slightly snug. And that's going to allow me to kind of stay, play, stay in place when I move things here. You can see these are tough plastic, but there's a little bit of, a little bit of fudge room in there. This is not exact science. Get my nuts ready back here. This one's a little bit of a stretch. I'm using the tips of my fingers right now. There we go. Got the back one started, the most furthest back. This one, I'm purely going off of feel right now. But again, that's where these uh, backing plates are perfect because they're already spaced. You don't have to, you're not in there with individual nuts and washers. So, I mean, To me, if you were in there with nuts and washers, this, this would be a huge pain in the ass. Um, I hate to keep saying it, but the hardware, between the hardware and the design of these things really makes this, really makes this what it is. So, having a hard time, I'm looking, I got the garage door closed, so I've got a shadow coming down. I'm just trying to get everything aligned right here, so I think it's right there. Check my camera here. I'm smooth you guys around so I'm not blocking everything. So what I'm gonna do there we go, looks good in the front. Get this set. I'm just cleaning out the extra plastic crap. I didn't do it on the other side, and you get all the curly cues up in there, and gets to be a little bit of a gets to be a little bit of a pain. So now I don't know how this is going to go because I was using opposite hands on the other side, but I'll give a quick representation of what I did. So, backing plates in here like this. And like once you get your arm in here, and unfortunately I think my right arm is a little bigger than my left arm, so I don't know if I'm gonna have the same reach on here. But what I did here, so it's sitting in here like this, bolted down. What I did 
because I held it like this with this piece back. Oops, sorry, it goes like that. And I was able to get the one started. Just just started, a couple, couple turns on the threads, and then I was able to kind of do a little flip to do there. And again, because these things are perfectly spaced, you can kind of maneuver it with one hand just enough to get it to fish around, and you'll feel that nice cone-tipped nut land in there. And that's how I did it. Now, I was using my left arm, and maybe my left arm is, you can kind of see, plastic's kind of nasty. But let me try to do this. I'll, I No guarantees here, guys, because like I said, I was doing this with the other arm on the other side. So let's see. I'm going to do the back here. Give the funny faces. There it is. Okay, I got like two threads in there started. Now I'm flipping it around. I just flipped it. Helps to have your hardware set out and ready so you don't have to, once you get your arm in here, you don't want to keep pulling it in and out because it hurts like a, hurts like a bastard. Get this plastic in. Ah. Look at that. So anyway, like I said, cut this if you have to. Tears the crap out of your arm. This is nothing different for those of you guys who are out there working on these machines. Sometimes there's some spots you can get into and it sucks. Shit gets tight. So we've got two more left and the last two are drilling or up in here which are by the handle. Let me uh, move you guys here a little bit. Sorry for my ultra professional camera work here. So when you drill these two, you got your handle here. Uh, very, very doable. You can get up in there no problem. But if you normally have your drill bit seated all the way down in the drill like I normally do, just a little pro tip if you just got your average Joe drill bit here. Oh run the drill bit just so it's barely oops, wrong way so it's barely catching it gives you that extra quarter inch of the drill bit you know nothing nothing crazy here but might help you what I got here too this little corner just barely touching just like they want it so you get up in here you are gonna be drilling these at a very slight angle working around the handle here Because I'm drilling at an angle, I don't want to. Shit. I don't want to push that in and then have the hole end up being an eighth inch off. And I'm wondering why I can't get the. Anyway, I'll stick that in there just to get the hole started. If it falls out, no big deal. Just like that. Okay, there's those two. So for these, you're going to open up the bed. Get you guys here set up again so you can see. And that hole I showed you in the front of the bed is where we're going to go. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to 
get it in there. I'm going to do the closest one first. While I think a helper with small arms helps here, for me, I have to, personally, I have to feel what I'm doing, both hands. So, anyway, all right, that started. It's a little snug, not bad. You're not reaching that far in here, so. Extension comes in handy here. Okay. Here's your fender flare. So what I'm going to do now, I'll do this off camera, not to bore you guys too bad. I'm just going to run through with a uh, hand ratchet. Just give these a, you know, a good a good snug that's all they need you don't have to go crazy here in fact i would not go crazy um and then we're going to go ahead and do the mud flap so i'll cut back for the mud flap install okay mud flap so just a quick overview here what i did i just drew a line an inch and a half down that's not required I don't have a good carpenter's eye, so inch and a half down. And what that means is you don't want to come up and have more than an inch and a half of a reveal here. So I just, yeah, somewhere close. I don't want it sticking up too far. Kind of gives you a good rough eyeball about where that thing should be setting. Inch and a half seems to work actually really well. So clamp helps a little bit. Again, a second clamp would help more but that is now gone. I don't know where it went. Uh, oh. So, check you guys here. Drill. Got my uh, quarter inch back on here. So take a minute here. They made these holes, there's three of them. They punched them out just like on the fronts. There's hard to see, but just pop them out of there. Uh, I got my inch and a half line. I'm setting up there. So from what I gather here too, that inch and a half makes sure that you get this nice flap here. And from what I can gather, it fits up in here and fits the contour of this flare perfectly. And obviously when the bed opens, the flare opens, this stays. So picture that when you're installing it. I'm gonna get it pretty pretty snug up in there to the edge. And what you want is you want to cover this gap right here. You don't want there to be this gap if you can avoid it. And on the other side, I did have to, I installed them. They looked really good. I started looking at it from this angle here and I could see light. And I realized I started doing some measurements and then I realized what Grizz Tech was talking about in the instructions. This piece of trim due to manufacturing variances at Polaris and there are many manufacturing variances. variances. So uh, it just sticks out a little more on the other side which meant there was a little bit bigger gap. Um, so I ended up, uh, all I did was I just took my X-Acto knife or my uh, utility knife and just just ever so slightly carved that hole out a little bit. And what that allowed me to do was on the other side, I was able to just slide that flap in just ever so slightly. So good news is these things are rubber, super easy to work with. Not a big deal if you have to make a few little tweaks here and there. But since I've done one side already and I've got YouTube watching, I'll try to do it in one shot this time. So. This drill bit's a lot sharper than the 516s, by the way. 
minute when you got a nut or a bolt, I mean. Here, this way. Just, just to hold it, you know. What you're doing is just following this line on down. Looks good to me. using power tools don't pinch your fingers in the washer in the back like I just did and what I did wrong there I'll show you I'm just gonna loosen that a little bit you wanna want to take this and you want to tuck it like that you want this to overlap over to the bottom it's like a roof shingle if you were to have it like this Stuff's just going to want to fall in there and get packed, so I don't know that it's going to make a huge difference, but hey, you know, we're going to do it. We might as well do it right. Take, uh, give me a little bit more here. Good news with these mud flaps, guys. They're really forgiving. This rubber is really easy to work with. pretty good right I wish my other drill bit was this shot doing the same thing here with the impact and just uh, Wrong way. Just running them down just enough to hold them in place. If I need to make some adjustments, I can. And there is one more that goes in there. Yeah, what we want to do is measure out inch and three quarters from the center here. I'll say this, I'm not quite sure why this why we didn't punch this hole but I think what it is like we talked about manufacturing variances I think if this hole were here I think with some machines that hole would land on a on a dead spot so what we're gonna do I think it says inch and three-quarters so from the center inch and three-quarters right there because I screw things up with measurements all the time especially when I'm reading the tape measure upside down Push on it, make sure. Oh yeah, I'm into something here for sure. And last but not least, this bolt here actually takes what seems to be kind of kind of floppy and draws it up there real nice. So that so what happens now is this piece is kind of tucked up underneath the, the fender flare and that's it guys that is the uh, installation here on the Grizz Tech fender flare kit for these Polaris Generals
Okay, just a final wrap up. Griztech fender flare installation complete. So I know a lot of us Polaris General people have been waiting for these things for a long time. The way these machines are laid out, the <clears throat> if you kind of look down the side of it in stock form, yeah, I think you would see that the I think the driver door see it's kind of got a bulge to it and tends to be the widest part of the machine. So with stock tires, you you know you end up just trashing these machines. Uh, the, the wheel wells seem to do very little, and then you put the bigger tires on, and you know these aren't. I mean, these are big, but they're not huge. Uh, these are just 30s. <clears throat> Offset on these wheels is 5'2", at least according to race line. So then you put these big tires and a little bit bigger offset on the wheels, and boy, you end up just uh, destroying the side of these machines with mud, dirt, and everything else. And not so bad. Uh, the uh, back, the back seat just gets pelted. So even in stock form, to me, these are, you know, these are a, a, a requirement. So anyway, but. So far, I mean, we've been waiting for these for a long time. I'm glad uh, Grizz Tech took their time. They got the design on these things right. Uh, they look fantastic. They look really good. Uh, I think they the function. I haven't ridden the machine in the mud yet or in the dirt or whatever. <clears throat> but just sort of looking at them, I think it's going to give the necessary protection, uh, you know, to, to take care of the, the, the way these machines just get trashed. And, I mean, obviously the design went into these things. Uh, they look really good on the machine. They, they follow the body lines perfectly. Um, I mean, it really just, it complements everything that uh, those of us who have these generals like about them so much. And, uh, you know, one of those things that we like is the looks. And I'm just going to tell you, these fender flares, uh, on top of the extra coverage, I think the function is going to be outstanding. But the looks are, you know, great there too. So, uh, installation-wise, I'd say it was it was easy. Uh, you know, there's a couple little subtleties there that you know you have to work around, but I'd say overall, I think uh, you know if you're moving along, this is a one-hour installation, maybe an hour and a half. Uh, you know, if you you know not ideal situations, maybe two hours. But you know, if I wasn't filming, I mean, I think this would have been an hour and a half install all day, and that included you know fiddling around with the mud flaps a little bit and things like that. So uh, easy installation, easy afternoon installation for most people. So. As I've mentioned uh, numerous times in the video, the hardware uh, is part of what makes a difference in that. So, uh, you know, the product is designed properly. The hardware is, uh, you know, is perfect. Makes this really easy. So, <clears throat> now these things too, uh, part of that, you know, with the hardware, I keep mentioning the hardware, I know it's annoying, but <clears throat> the hardware not only serves for an installation purpose, but that big backing plate serves a lot of I mean, this thing is, I mean, well, there's some flex to the plastic, but this thing is so solid on this machine. These flares are just, I mean, they are, they are rock solid. And that's in part the design, it's in part the, the hardware, the, the backing plates, the way that they're, they're laid out. The overall design of this is well thought out. You know, these are not an afterthought. I mean, these things are solid, guys, so don't worry about these getting ripped off, damaged, or anything like that. I think even with this material, if it takes even a little poke with a tree or, a, you know, some other obstacle that we might encounter, I think you'll be totally fine. These things are super solid. I mean, just, just really solid. I mean, you can move this whole machine. I bet you if this machine wasn't in park, I could probably take and just push the whole machine right by this fender flare. That's how solid it is, so. I'm not gonna do that, but uh, anyway good value I, I think uh, the price point is right um, you know with the amount of money that we spend on these machines I think the, the price point is right there I think it's fair uh, you know didn't go and kind of jump the shark with the price uh, kept it fair but I know there's a lot of time and money that went into developing these things too so um, I know the R&D I talked to Randy at Grizz Tech on at least a few occasions via email and telephone and uh, the R&D that went into these is extensive so you know, part of the reason these didn't get launched, you know, six months ago, eight months ago, is because, uh, <clears throat> you know, the unique design of this machine, the contours, the angles are complex. And, you know, looking at the way these fenders are, you can tell that. And the amount of R&D that went into getting these right, getting the molds right to make these. And I, I know that it was a, uh, 
it was a long process, but I think those of us, you know, with a little bit of patience, I think it was well worth the wait. Um, so good value. Looking forward to getting this thing out in the trail and using them. And I mean, according to me, I still think, even though these fender flares in my book are required, I still think the bear skins are number one on my list for required required protection for these generals. I, but I think these fender flares are going to be a very close second. But, you know, all the stuff Polaris leaves open on these. The bear skins are number one. I think these, these fender flares are going to be a very close number two.